women pick up surveillance faster than men do, as part of their survival skills, and they at once recognize desire. They also recognize its absence. Thomas Harris You're listening to That Gets My Goat on the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. Howdy, folks. This is Rich Outfield. And Big Anklevich. Welcome. Welcome back to uh, That Gets My Goat. I haven't done an episode in a little while. Anything interesting going on with you right now? Anything upsetting? Angering? <laughs> goat getting? All right. I had the opportunity to see the men who stare at goats. What did you think? I declined the opportunity, actually. Oh, you had the opportunity but did not take <laughs> advantage of it. Is that a good movie? Should I see it? I didn't love it, but it was one of those where I saw the trailer and it's like, oh, this movie's for me. And whoever edited the trailer together did their job. Right. Because it got me to go out there. I didn't see it in the theater. I rented it. And I, it's probably worth seeing. I like Clooney. I like Ewan McGregor. Jeff Bridges, I think, is in it. But it, it's not one of those that I ever really need to see again, I don't think. All right. Well, that got my goat that I didn't see the goats that the men stare at. Okay. <laughs> How was your Valentine's Day? It wasn't bad. I mean, I don't know. Valentine's Day is one of those non-holiday holidays. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to go to work. Oh, right, right. And, you know, you get home at night. I went out with my wife. We went to dinner. And uh, my kids called like four times. During dinner? While we were there. And it was just like, Argh! We We went to a steakhouse. They had like country music playing really loud. I couldn't hear squat on the phone when they called, so I had to actually get up and walk out of the restaurant to be able to hear what they were trying to tell me and answer their questions. So no emergencies. It was just, no. when are you coming yeah, home, just like, yeah, Papa? Man, yeah, my brother's doing this. He's hitting me. You know, that kind of crap. It was a little frustrating, I'll have to admit. Did that get your goat? It got my goat, yes. It takes a little romance out of a romantic evening out when you don't actually get to spend time with the person that you went out with. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was all right. It's not really a holiday, you know. You still have to go to work. You still have to do all the same old crap. And maybe you get to do a little something afterwards. But it's not like, I don't know, Christmas or Thanksgiving where you get days off usually even. Not just a day. It's just more to it or something. I don't know. Well, what would you have done had that Valentine's Day fallen on a Saturday, for example? Would you have gone somewhere? Or, I mean, you can't because you've got 15 kids, right? Or... <laughs> I have some. 15 might be a little more than the actual total, but yeah. Oh, well, okay. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase the question. What is the most outlandish, the biggest thing you've done for Valentine's Day? I've never done much outlandish. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that you can't do. I might, if it was on a Saturday, perhaps go out of town or you could get a hotel room somewhere and go stay at the bed and breakfast or something and, and get a babysitter or have your kids stay with your sister's kids or something. I don't know. You could possibly do something. I doubt I would because I'm lame and it's going to stay that way. Perhaps you're not lame but the day itself well, is lame. Well, that could be the case, too. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of those things. I've never done that for any of those days. I've never done it for an anniversary. I've never done it for my wife's birthday or any other time that you show appreciation to that person with whom you share your life. <laughs> now you have a friend in the diamond business. That's right. <laughs> Well, is it that you don't like the arbitrariness of, hey, you're supposed to do this on this day? You're one of those guys, if I'm going to be romantic, it's going to be spur of the moment. It's going to be the third week in April, and I bring her flowers, and I say, hey, let's go somewhere. Let's go to that back alley where we first met. <laughs> Stuff like that? Or I would like to say that, that I am that guy that would do that, but I'm probably not. I'm probably the guy that needs something to force me to do it. There probably was a time. I mean, when I first got married, I used to try and do that kind of stuff all the time. But I don't know. As, as years go by, I don't know if you just run out of ideas or if you just get less motivated or what the deal is. But Well, you've got several things, for lack of a better word, pulling on you in a different direction. You know, you've got your job. You've got 
your responsibilities here. You've got several children in each direction, 15 children. <laughs> the ones that you know about, I'm talking about. <laughs> the ones that I know about. You know, you've got your wife, you've probably got in-laws, you've probably got I mean, I don't know. Everybody in this little town gets to be mayor at some point. I don't think it's your <laughs> turn yet, but uh, I would imagine. And, and plus, she works as well. Right. So your schedules are even thinner. Uh, maybe again, it's not you that's lame. <laughs> but it's the day. I don't know. Is it something when you do go out to a bed and breakfast or have in the past one of those things where you're just like, oh my gosh, that was the great. I look back on that time as when I was so happy. Or is it one of those, you're, you're older now and you're like, you know what? This is our house. I would rather just be here. She, I know she would rather just be here. That is sometimes nice. There, there's something for getting away and there's something to, you know, I mean, if you can get your kids to go to somebody else's house and be able to have the bed and breakfast be your own house. Of course, the unfortunate thing is there's no breakfast unless you make it at your own house. It's not like you don't have a fridge full of stuff. That, that's another thing is, you know, you're, you're married. You've got your joint accounts and stuff like that. And, hey, yeah, pass that joint account over to me. Please. And going out and buying a present for somebody, it, it's not the same. It's not like when you're not married to somebody and you, buy, you use your money to buy something for them, you know. If you go out and you're like, yeah, I'm going to spend $100 on you to get you this necklace. You'd be like, you spent $100? <gasps> you know? and <laughs> You can't win. Huh? Yeah, and you got to, I guess, find a balance in buying the present without blowing the budget, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> which can be a, a problem as well. I mean, for those of us who are uh, independently for wealthy, that's not a problem, but... For those of us that aren't, for the rest of us, most of us that aren't, it's not the same. You can't just go and blow money like that and expect her to smile about it. Like, yeah, well, that's nice, but now how do I fill the car with gas to get to work this next week? You know how to put a romantic spin on everything, man. Yeah, I'm just a hopeless romantic that way. How was your <laughs> Valentine's Day, the greatest day of the year? Really? The, you're going to say that? You're going to do that? The greatest day of the year. It was uneventful, of course, for me. There was an episode, I think I told you about it, there was an episode that we recorded so long ago that recently aired that I, I could hear my beginnings of hope for romance ah. in some little thing that I said. And I was like, oh, you poor, naive bastard. <laughs> I have so little romantic interaction that I got to take whatever I can get, even if it's a Zales diamond commercial or, you know, just a little <laughs> it's, a it's smile. It's just that commercial with the shadows. The shadows copulating. Do, 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 do. Wait, that's not that. That's Jack in the Box, isn't it? Yes, I, I will take Jack in the Box. The only even remotely brush-like the only remotely brush, the only, help me out here. I'll just say it another time. <laughs> Maybe you'll get it this time. The only remotely close to a brush with romance that I had this week was, uh, we're doing another karaoke contest uh, mm -hmm. at this, this bar that I like to go to. And, uh, and this one, I, I think I mentioned it months ago when we did that first one, is a costumed karaoke contest or oh. as i found out on the night of the competition exactly the same thing that everybody else had in mind for the last one which wasn't a costume competition and basically you're just supposed to dress up like somebody and sing one of their songs and sound like them as much as you can and so i went all out doing mine uh i think i did well um there was only one other person who bothered to like get a costume together and you know, kind of do something outlandish. And this was that same girl that I guess either won or second place in the last one. And she had put on like this black body stocking and then put on her underwear over the black body stocking and then put all of these foam balls that she had spray painted gold all over her body. And I guess this is something that Lady Gaga wore in one of her awful <laughs> videos. And so I was really impressed by it because she was the only other person that went as all out as I had. And while she was up there singing the song, these balls would drop off of her <laughs> by accident. She, you know, she'd move her arm and one would fly out into the crowd. And I thought that was pretty good. But there were, there were two nights for qualifications 
and the for the second night which in which I wasn't performing this friend of mine the girl that I had a history with that some enchanted evening you know our eyes had met across the uh, crowded room and uh, <laughs> for a moment there I thought things were going to go in a certain direction and they didn't anyway she asked me if I would participate with her and so of course I said yes and and what she was doing is she was going to be Axel Rose uh, from Guns N' Roses and she wanted me to be Slash Mm -hmm. and so she got me this curly black wig and had me put it on backwards uh, (laughs) so all the hair went over my face and then a top hat and and she has a guitar and she she gave that to me and we hadn't rehearsed she just said you know I'll meet you there i clear sign there ladies i'm sure and and i'll just give you your stuff and we'll we'll go from there and anyhow i i couldn't see anything with this wig on <laughs> i was completely blind so basically she led me up to the stage and then we started to play and there was a chair cuz she said wouldn't it be funny if you got up there and you played the guitar for a second and then you passed out like a you know some kind of heroin thing and then I would shake you when it's time for your guitar solo. And I was like, oh, that's really good. And so we did it. And at one point, my top hat fell off. And I didn't know where it was. And I was feeling around for it, <laughs> you know, trying not to bump the guitar. And, and I couldn't find it. And so finally, I just got up to pass out again. And, and she had picked up the top hat and put it on the chair. And I sat on it, which isn't at all funny. But I guess if you had seen the video, it would be funny. I don't know that people knew I was blind, but I bumped into her at one point and, you know, bumped into the microphone stand with the guitar. And uh, I don't know. It makes for a fun story. But the point that I wanted to make was, and I, I mentioned months ago when we talked about this girl that my feelings had really changed for this girl. And in seeing her dressed as a man, For some reason, I was super, super attracted to her. I mean, like more (laughs) than I ever had been before. And I wanted to ask you what you think that means. But it was like, I don't know what it was like. It was like I was looking at a different person. And there were a couple of like, you know, big boobed, drunken, dancing, slutty looking babes there at the bar where it's just like, oh, yeah. But I would much rather have been with her, with, with uh, Axel Friggin' Rose, than any of these hot chicks. You and must have a thing hot for hot Axel Rose, chicks. maybe. We sat together and watched the other performers and, you know, would lean over and say some snarky thing about each other or them or whatever. And I started getting that ninth grade history class thing where it's just like, if she leans over and asks me another question... I may kiss her. I'm I'm not, I'm not choosing to do it. I may have to do it. And I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but there would be these hormonal floods where it's like, oh my gosh, I've got to make out with this girl. I've got to do it. I, I, I'm not even in my body anymore. I'm being puppeteered. I'm going to touch this girl's boob in the middle of history class. And of course, I never actually did it. But I remember a couple of times where it's just like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? I, I, I'm possessed. <laughs> No, I'm infested. No, no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know that I ever got that far. Well, get that... possessed by uh, my own hormonal urges. Wow. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know if that ever happened to me where I was just like, okay, that's it. No, I gotta. It's one of those things where, you know, I'll see some kind of puberty metaphor in a superhero film or in a horror film or something like that. And the person feels like they're this monster, this horrible thing. And, you know, at some point, somebody will tell them, hey, no, come on, man. Everybody goes through this. Everybody feels what you're feeling right now. You know, you're not a freak. You're not, you're not sick, despite what my dad would tell you. <laughs> but what you're saying is that I actually was sick and not everybody experienced what I was experiencing. Well, I'm sure you weren't the only one that experienced what you were experiencing. Just doesn't mean everyone has the same experience. Okay, this is freaking me out, man. You've never been with a girl. I have been with a girl. Let me finish. (laughs) What's it like? (laughs) Been with a girl in a car or a movie or walking through the park or that back alley right behind the abortion clinic. And you have this almost uncontrollable urge to kiss her. And it's just like, I'm going to kiss her. And you're just like, we're caught in the tractor beam, Chewy. That's pulling us in. (laughs) There's nothing we can do. Nothing like that? I'm trying to think of an experience. 
So in the times that you've kissed girls for the very first time, it's always been a conscious, I'm going to kiss you now, just so you know. And then you lean in. It's not one of those where you just start to lean and you're like, wow, we're, we're leaning toward each other. I, I'm outside my body now. <laughs> I think it's always been a conscious thing for myself. I don't know if there's ever been a time that it's been the other way around. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know what to say. I have such limited romantic experience, and it's great to talk to somebody to let me know I'm not alone. Uh, okay, well, this is something that I have experienced before during those pubescent years. Mm -hmm. You know, all it takes is one really, really crappy experience, I think to damage somebody for the rest of their lives. Perhaps we're getting too personal here. I am damaged for the rest of my life. But I, it was just so strange because honestly, in all the years I have known her and the history that we have, I never had that, holy crap, I'm going to be on her sensation. You know, it's like, ah, kind of thing. You know, some kind of sensual overload I don't even know how to describe it because it's not a conversation that I have with other people very often. It's just so <laughs> weird. I just assumed that everybody, some younger, some later, have this must touch boobies kind of thing or overwhelming urge. No? Wow. Okay. Maybe we'll have Marshall Latham on the show next week. I don't, I, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> to be continued. Please, sir, that gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. But you're free to steal it. <laughs>